Welcome back. Now it's been a while, but I've made quite a lot of progress in that time. Firstly, I decided I'd split the carbs. This way I could fit them individually in the ultrasonic cleaning tank. It also gave me a chance to clean the linkages and choke plungers too. Here's a quick before and after. Next, I drained the coolant. I did this in order to get the radiator out of the way so I could get the header pipes off. Now, I've been holding off on this job for quite a while because I've been waiting for something that's gonna make it a lot easier. Now, for my birthday this year, my ever supportive wife got me an ABBA Skylift. This is gonna be such a useful piece of equipment for me as the ability to raise stuff up and move things around in my compact workshop makes things so much easier. I loosened the radiator brackets and I swung it out of the way. Then I began to remove the headers. Then I removed the rear mounting bolt and pulled the pipes off completely. So if you remember back to that very first video, I explained that the bike was blown over in a storm and my original exhaust had cracked at the collector box. Now I found this set at the time. In addition to the NAF paint job, they'd been repaired in the past of a bit of stainless tube. As it turns out, that wasn't the correct size for the original end can. I finally managed to pick up an unmolested set in much better condition. They could do with a light restoration, but most importantly, the outlet was in great shape, and with a fresh wire gasket from Yamaha, it fitted nice and snug. Oh. I switched the valve over and began giving them an initial clean with WD-40 and a scotch bright pad. After a quick polish up of auto sole, they were looking great. I gave the rest a bit more of a clean and offered them up to the bike. Yeah, they're not fitting. So it turns out, even though they were labelled up as FZR 1000 pipes, they're actually from a YZF 750. Obviously a very similar shape and style, but not the same. I decided I'd recover that cost by finishing the restoration and selling them on, but I knew I'd get more for them if they came with a valve. The timing was on my side, as I happened to see a set of first generation R1 pipes on eBay, and I snapped them up for just 20 pounds. Any XUP owner will be very familiar with the following steps. With the valve swapped across, I put them up on eBay and they got bought quite quickly for £120. I found a correct set that was in Germany, so while I waited for them to get here, I thought I'd get busy and get cracking on with some smaller jobs. First up, I rebuilt the clutch slave cylinder with fresh seals, springs, bleed nipple and boot. Thank you. 
I refitted it and filled the line with fresh fluid. I chose to bleed it from the slave cylinder upwards to make bleeding easier. Although I probably should have paid more attention to the reservoir. Doing it that way meant bleeding the air out only took a few minutes. Topped up the reservoir and fastened the cap with new screws. Next up was the clocks, starting with giving them a good clean. Then a bit of grease in the speedo drive before reattaching all of the electrical connections and bulbs. Compared to how they looked before, I think they've come up pretty well. Now I sent the fairing bracket off to be blasted and powder coated and it came back looking incredible. Thanks again to Curdford Shop Blasting. I mounted it to the frame with shiny new hardware all round. Then I fitted the nice clean gauges and fitted the screen brace. Then I fed the speedo drive cable through its bracket and tightened it up at both ends. Finally, the pipes had arrived and though they weren't in quite as good condition, it did have the correct size outlet for the link pipe. It also came with a bonus valve, which clearly seen better days. So first job was to remove that. I had to drill out the studs with the help of my mate Ollie. Then tapped in M6 threads. I transferred the good valve over and checked it all fit and that the valve moved freely. Then I put the cable racket on before offering up to the engine. Much better. Then I connected the cables and adjusted the tension so that it settled in the correct place. Then moved it, flipped the ignition on and checked to make sure it moved back to the idle position. I closed it all up and brought the bike back down to a level more suitable for putting the cooling system back together. I seem to be good at spilling this. And in the words of Ace Ventura, A quick fire up to check for exhaust leaks and check the clocks work. No leaks, but also no lights or movement on the clocks. The connector was fine, so I whipped them off and went back through the sublim. 
I found that the contacts had corroded in the time that they'd been in the box on the floor in that cold, wet garage. So I cleaned them up with sandpaper and tried again. Yeah. Success. Time to make a start on the tank. It could definitely do with a clean. And though I'm not gonna repair these dings in the paintwork, I will be sorting these rusty bits and replacing the O-rings in the pet cock and fuel level sender. I took a deep breath and had a look inside to check out what kind of soup I've been brewing in there. I reckoned it was time to get that out. I removed the fuel level sender and emptied the rusty water out. Then I removed the pet cock before giving the outside a decent clean. There, one clean fuel tank. Well, on the outside at least. The inside was a different story. I started by taking the fuel cap off, cleaning up the filler hole and making sure that the drain hose was clear. This paint flaking off from the rust was going to need sorting. I found a bung that was a good fit for the filler hole and taped up the holes on the bottom so that I could rinse out the worst of the rust in the tank. A bit better, now it's ready to treat what's left. I made up a bucket of deoxy solution with warm water and stirred it together. Then I filled the tank with it. Carefully at first, of course, but naturally then I got impatient. I gave it about eight hours upside down and then the same again upright to be sure that it got to every corner. Then I emptied it all out. Much better. I gave it a rinse out with fresh fuel to stop it flash rusting and then dried it completely with a hairdryer. I started to prep the areas that needed painting, starting with the surfaces that the pet cock and fuel level send a seal against. Then I cleaned up and replaced the O-rings on the fuel level sender as well as the pet cock placing both the bolts and the ceiling washers on both. I removed the rust with a sanding drum in the Dremel, then gave the area a coat of primer and sat in black. Now this is out of sight, so it just needed to prevent further corrosion rather than match the factory finish. I replaced the pet cock and fuel level sender, and with that, it was ready to go back on the bike. I also noticed that the rear brake was binding, so I decided to do it properly, and I pulled the caliper apart and replaced the seals, cleaning out the built-up corrosion in the seal grooves. Much better. Now on the subject of brakes, I noticed something really worrying about the front discs. So the friction material on the pads were very close to the bobbins, and on the inside they actually fouled on them. Turns out the 94 model discs are slightly different and aren't compatible with the blue spot conversion, so I need to get hold of some earlier discs that would work.
could do that, or I could get a brand new set from EBC. I also took this opportunity to put new disc bulbs back in. Now with something as important as brakes, it's so important to get a competent person to help you. So I brought in the big guns. Problem solved, and with the added benefit of some lovely new discs. The last job was to tighten up the banjos on the lines and fill with fluid. Just like the clutch, with dry lines I always prefer to reverse bleed to make it easier to get pressure in the lever. I managed to keep it all in the reservoir this time too. did the same on the other side, then took a moment to feed the local hedgehog that was scuttling about outside. I topped up the fluid and gave them a quick test. I think we're on the home straight now. I mean, what's left? Get the tank on, bodywork, headlights, check everything over, then get it out on the road for a test drive. See you then.